Rena, thank goodness. All right, now we can start. <laughs> <laughs> as long as Rena's here. There we go. Let's just shoot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice. Who is, who is Tonic? Somebody walked into the wrong room. <laughs> Wait, who's Tonic? <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Anyway, so here we are, 22 years after the release of our record, Sugar. 22. Can you guys, can you guys believe that? 22. Yeah. And <laughs> Lucy's like, hi, Dad. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's your daughter, your child. I know it's my, I know, babe. I know it's you. <laughs> Welcome to the room. Um, <coughs> yes, we call, but it, what do they say in Spanish? It's the 20 dos, right? The 22. Si. Si. It's not bad. You guys, uh, something about BTE. Um, no, I'm not going to repeat that. Hey, hey. Um, Two years since Smiling the Loans. That's right, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. well, I, I'm not even seeing any of these. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Levy's on. I see Levy. Yeah, I see him on there. Um, so anyway, so yeah, 20, 22 years ago released. But I feel like it was a few months, I mean, like months before that, that it was finished. But you know we, what I'm just remembering? This is it was, a... It was, lo it was longer than that. Yeah. It was a worthwhile memory. Um, we were on tour with the Goo Goo Dolls when this record came out. That's right. Right? In New Orleans. Oh, that where we made the record. Where, exactly. So it was super fitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's Jack. This is super, it's super distracting, trying to, trying to um, talk to you guys and also read the comments. I know, right? It is a little bit. But you know what? We're all here together in one big room. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but anyway, do so you want to ask, you want to re read some, hear some questions? You know what? We're all here together. We <laughs> might as well. We might as well hear it. All right. Um, first question. Would you ever consider doing an acoustic version of Sugar like you did for Lemon Parade? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Why not? I'd, I'd consider it. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, that was fun making the Lemon Parade revisit. I thought that was cool. Yeah, I enjoyed doing that. I mean, it'd be great if we could like go back to New Orleans and redo it in New Orleans. That would be fun. No, that yeah, would... <clears throat> unfortunately, that studio is long gone. I know, I know, mm. but uh, maybe maybe just a little sprinkle a little magic wherever we are and. The ghosts of the past will revisit, yeah. or we do it. Or we do it on Lake Austin, where we wrote the record. That's true. Lake, Lake Travis. Lake Travis. Tra yeah. Lake Travis. Sorry, so the, it's in, not in Lake Austin. Lake Travis. <clears throat> right. Um, but didn't we do some tracking at Sound City on that one? Oh yeah, yeah we, <coughs> we recorded. We did, we did yeah. all the all the rhythm tracks were done at Sound City, and then right. we went. Lake. Then we went there. Then at Kingsway, New Orleans, we did the overdubs. Yes, and then we also were at House of Blues studio here, right? Didn't we do a bunch at House of Blues studio? Oh That's right. Yeah. I don't remember if that was before or after uh, New Orleans. I think I feel like that's where we finished. We just... I think you're right. I think we are. were kind of back home, and we just kind of wrapped it up in L.A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it was I South think, okay. City, Kingsway, House of Blues West. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All amazing studios. I see, I see you're still in the studio, Jeff. Are you working yeah. right now? I, no, I, I never leave. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, it's how funny. are you liking being back in Jersey? Um, you know, I, every time I feel like I'm about to, like, get settled and, you know, unpack or something, mm -hmm. then we, we would go out and play some shows. And then That's... I'd get disjointed again. So I'm, I feel like I have a few weeks now to really kind of dig in. Um, plus, uh, yeah, this, it's just been a busy few months since that, um, since this re relocation happened, you know? Yes, I'm with you. But, uh, but it's cool. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, you know. It's cool, literally. 
It's yeah. Although it was beautiful here today, man, like really warm. I think it was. I know like, it was seventy-four degrees here in Nashville today. It was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, what's <laughs> what's up with that? I don't know. I mean, you know, this is this is our fall. This is how it rolls. Yeah. Out. Anyway, so to answer the question, are we all in agreement that yeah, we would consider re-recording that record? I would love to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Especially because at the end of the day, we have these limited edition kind of the vinyl. Uh, to show for it, you know what I mean. Beyond it's true. The yeah. Tracks. I love the the. Uh, we've gotten really into playing vinyl again. Mm hmm. Has been really cool. It has been. And so the next question I have here is: What song on the record took the longest to write and finish? Second half of that question is: Were there any songs that came together easily? <laughs> <laughs> I say nothing came together easily. <laughs> nothing came together easily. Although I would say Sugar was pretty, that was pretty quick. That was not a, that song was not a huge um, wrestling. Well, yes, it was. Yeah, it we, was a we, completely different song. And then, yeah, oh shit, that. that's right. When you yeah, listen, that, that, that got, <laughs> I mean, the chorus anyway, got rewritten like twice or three times. Mm -hmm, you're right, before. you're right. So, yeah. So that one, okay, so that, no. that one uh, took pretty long. <laughs> Although, uh, what I remember is we did the whole record, demos for the whole record out at Mets. Mets. Was it Mets? No, no, yeah. it was that our studio. No, it was at Mets. No, it was at Mets, man. We had, yeah. we had, we had that super edgy ADAP machine set up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel yeah. like it was for the next record. No. We did that again. We did that. Yeah. We had like, we had an eight track ADAT. I remember like. Yeah, we, we did, we did demos of it on an eight track. Yeah. But I think it was in our space at, at Mets. Right. Not Mates. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, I said Mets. Oh, Mates, Mets. But then we went to Mates for the next record. That's what it was. Yes, we did Mates. That was the big room at Mates. Oh my God. Hey, there's Tom from BTE. Hey, Tom. <laughs> um, Love so, it. it was a good tour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been good. So, so yeah. So, to, I, I think Sugar was one that took pretty long at, at the end of the day. I think You Wanted More was, was another one that was pretty, was one that was pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. but that was, that was also done and that was also done before we recorded the record, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Done at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so that's that's a good example of both. This is really really challenging my memory right now. <laughs> oh. No, like I I remember a song. Um, I remember uh, "Bring Me Down." Wasn't "Bring Me Down"? Didn't "Bring Me Down" go pretty fast? Like that was like, here's the riff, here's the song. Yeah, rock and roll drag, done. Drag me down. Drag me down. That's what I meant. <laughs> drag me down. Bring me down. Whatever. This is like watching. Slow train crash. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this. Podium. My memory is right. <laughs> but that um, that is... one was fast. That one I remember being like, there was really no discussion about it. There was really no. That wasn't like a complex thing. It was like. Yeah, I think Love a Diamond the same because really, isn't it just kind of repeats? Yeah. But we did that demo for that movie. See, Caleb just said Irish was the most rehearsed. Without a doubt. Been that, that's because Irish had been being played for yeah. ever. And also was not on this record. And not on this <laughs> record. Well, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Caleb. Yeah. Um, all right. So, that, you know, that's, that's kind of a confusing answer, but that's on brand for us. So there you go, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your favorite song from Sugar to play live? I, I want to say, for me, it, I think it's Sugar. Actually, I mean, You Wanted More is kind of awesome, too. I love playing that. Yeah, I want to say You Wanted More, man. That's my favorite song to play from that, right? I love playing Sugar, don't get me wrong, but... Yeah. I think, for me, Wanted More is the most fun, but when we finally figured out the three-part harmony at the end of um, Love a Diamond, and we did that at the end of the set, that always had, like, a real heartstring pull moment. <laughs> 
I mean, when we, yeah, when we got it, when we got that right and we sang and it was great and we sang it, it was just the three of us singing at the end of that really was pretty moving. So that was really yeah. that's fun for me. Yeah. Dig that. All right. Moving right along. <laughs> uh, which is each of your, each of your personal favorite songs from the album? Um, yeah, so I would say kind of along the same lines. Probably you wanted more for sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it, those are those are two pretty heavy ones for me. I mean, we've also, you know, we've played the shit out of them and they've been in the set and Yeah. So they you know, they grow on you, but um I like you know what I really I, going back I, to the other question. I love playing Top Falls Down. Again, a song yeah, that wasn't originally done for that record. Doesn't matter. Well, but to get back to the other question, because I have sort of a different take. I, I mean, I love, I love you wanted more, and I love sugar, but there's something about Future Says Run that was all made it my favorite. Not to play, because that was always fun to play, but it's the op because it's the opening of the record. Mm -hmm. You know. And we used, remember, we used to open up live with that one. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. But I love that. I love that song. That song, I'd, that's probably my favorite song on the record today. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Link, Lincoln pointed out, Queen is on Sugar. I forgot yeah. that. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Remember that song we played a couple nights ago? It's called Queen. It's on there. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a great time. Yeah, it was fantastic. <clears throat> Actually, you know, I really like this record. <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> um, Turns out it's a pretty damn good record. <laughs> <laughs> what is, um, okay, so were there any musical influences for Sugar? Uh, you know, I think, I think there were some environmental. What, like we, more environmental, think, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like being in Texas and then being in New Orleans, there was always like a Southern, mm -hmm. you know, something different on this particular record that it, that I think is different from all the others. I agree. I, with that. I agree. Yeah. Everybody bought I mean, my that, that stuff. That stuff is evidenced in songs like Jump Jimmy too, like with a little more sort of swagger, bluesy rock, you know, yeah. a little bit of a, like that. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah, think, so. I think it was still, it, like every record we've made, except for Head On Straight, I think it was a real eclectic record. I think, I think Lemon Parade and I think Sugar were both eclectic records. And it wasn't until, for me at least personally, until we got to Head On Straight, that was, there was a real strong thread in that record. Would you agree? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that, that head on straight's a bit more straightforward for us, definitely. Yeah. But yeah. I think that, that turned when we made four. I'm going to call it four because I can. Yeah. But um, you know, <laughs> uh, when, when when we did that record, I think we turned sort of back to a little bit more of a a, a more of an eclectic thing. It was a little bit more of an eclectic thing. A little bit more of a mix. I don't yeah. know. All right. Wait, I want to knock out Joey, the artist. He's thrown out real quick. Waiting for the light to change. Story behind that song. Very quickly. Um, that was like every two years in our life, what the next thing was going to be, what we were striving for, um, and where we were. You know, that's, that's just life in general. You're always waiting for the next thing. And um, unfortunately, when you do that, you miss some of the good stuff because you sit there and you're, in the waiting place, not paying attention to really what the good stuff is going on. Anyway, okay, so we can go on. So sorry about that. So yeah. I'm, I'm trying to hit a couple as we go. It's like yeah. strafing. I'm just. Wooly Brendan says, Sunflower is an amazing tune. Does it ever get a run live? And I think the answer to that is one time. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a one time. And it's a drag because it's a great song. Yeah, I feel like we played it at the the, the 20th anniversary, and I don't remember ever playing it before that. Do you guys? We did. Yeah? We did play it one, I think, one other time. And I, I remember saying that when we did the thing at, at Molly's. Yeah. We had another time. 
but yeah, I mean, I think that's it. I think it got so twice. Yeah. Um, sunflower. Hey, and uh, let me. Okay, back to my paper. Uh, any fun stories from the studio from while you're recording this album? Fun or funny? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of it was. Uh, Kingsway was really haunted. <laughs> well, I got you. Don't you remember when we were? It, I think it was you and me, and we were sitting. We were tracking some was late night or something, and we saw the apparition at the top of the stairs. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I mean, we were drunk. Oh. Hey. Uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't. I was dying to see a ghost. I was begging to see a ghost. Well, we, ghost we, I, I told that story to my kids, and they got truly frightened. <laughs> nice. Frightened. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know what? My, my favorite story is that we hired uh, one of my old friends, uh, Eugene Pierce, to oh, come down and take photos. Look, you can look up his photos on Instagram. Uh, but he came, he came down for a week and we had been drinking and eating so much like heavy food that like half of the photos were like just bloated and that's not, I made me take another, another session. <laughs> I to clean it. Yeah, great, man. A lot of those photos are great. Yeah. For probably, the early, probably the early stuff. <laughs> when he first got there. Yes. <laughs> Um, what else we got? MTV Live. Ooh, that was a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, if you could change anything about the album, what would that be? Uh, probably wouldn't have put You Wanted More <laughs> on the soundtrack for American Pie and pushed our record instead. Instead yeah. of M2 million or 3 million records, whatever that was. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, that's the fucking truth. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, but creatively, I mean, you know, I, I guess I don't, th I don't know that I would change anything at this point. I mean, Not I, creatively, no. I think, I, think the I, would, I think with anything that I've ever recorded personally, and you guys may feel the same, it's just a couple of years later, I'd like to go back and re-record all of the stuff I played and just do it all again or differently or better or whatever, but you just have to let it go. You know? I'll tell you what I think. I think that the one we didn't get, there's one song that we didn't get. What's that? Queen. I think we could have done Queen better. We've played Queen better than we recorded it on that record. We've done, we, we've done, we've played that song so much better than the way it ended up on the record. I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs on the record. And that one song, I don't know, I've always sort of felt like, did we get that? Did we, did we nail that one? Everything else is so great to me. And I love that. Like I said, I love that song. But we've nailed that song. I just remember being in Amsterdam and playing that song and just nailing it. And we never, we never got, I never got that feeling when we made that record. Oh, everything's on the table now, boys. Shit. Everything's on the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, well, there it is, you know. Jeff, Jeff, I just, Jeff has spoken, that's his opinion. I, it's an opinion, but I like, yeah, I mean, I love that song so much, it's, I, I, I don't disagree. I think that we do, it grooves better live than it does on the record. I'm yeah. not going to. Yeah, well, yeah, like we, we found the groove later, probably. Yeah, and, you know, maybe that just, that's what happens, you know. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Fair question, fair. It's end. all on the table now. It's everything's coming out. <laughs> uh, we've done this already once, but, like, share the inspiration behind a song. Uh, the most requested ones were Waltz, Future, and Jump Jimmy. Um, I think Future, definitely, we were on the second record at that point, existed, recording it. Um, and one of the lines in the song is, you can't go on, you can't even talk. 
your future, your future says run, but you can't even walk because you, you know, it's like you, we, we were working so hard or was exactly what it should be while being extremely exhausted. And, um, <laughs> I think that song was just pure anxiety. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I was you, know, you just, you can't, everything is great and you've got your slot and you're running and the band is, we're fucking gunning and doing great. And at any second, it could all fall apart. Mm. So I think that's the inspiration behind that one. Um, you just gave me anxiety. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> what, what's the question? Um, uh, all time favorite song to for, uh, what is your all time favorite song to perform from any album? Oh, man, I love playing Mountain still. That's one of my favorites. It just it feels great. That's a really great one. Every time, no matter what, when we hit that first chord, mm -hmm. I, I get a chill every time we every time we play it, every time we sing that first note of those three notes, you know what I mean, where we where we all sing that three part harmony. That's that's incredible. That's yeah. incredible. But I also I, I also um really love playing casual affair too. That's always a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And you mixed the hell out of it, Jack. No doubt about it. Max, Jack was just saying that was his favorite to mix live. Oh, uh, yeah. What, he was talking about Mountain? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do we ever play Helen Fitzgerald's in St. Louis? I don't remember that name. I don't, but he said that they have a gold record. So I guess somebody got it. I don't know where they got it from. but okay. They got it from Jeff... Uh, the hell was his name? Jeff something radio guy in, oh. in the yeah. mid Jeff Davis. Jeff he Davis. Could have been our guy there, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um I have one more question here. It is what is my <laughs> my fifteen year old niece is wanting to learn to play bass. Do you have any suggestions on gear for a beginner? <laughs> That's all you, buddy. Damn. <laughs> I would say um that Fender has some great starters packs, like a oh yeah, nice, nice little P bass, little rumble amp. You'll be bothering your parents in no time. Um, that's all I have on the paper. Any other questions right now? Um, I'm just kind of watching here. I remember waiting for MTV to pay you on a more when it first came out. What was filming that video like? That video, uh, <laughs> that video, we had a good, what was his name, Neil? Who Niels was, Alpert. Niels Alpert. Niels was Alpert, there. oh yeah. We went to that old high school, which I have seen in many movies since we shot that video. Uh, isn't that um, Burbank High? I think it's Burbank High, isn't it? Is it? It was, in, in, it was Burbank. in Burbank. Yeah. Yeah. Great, anyway, blast, uh, whoever asked that question. It was so much fun. That uh, was good. It was a great day, and I mean, I got to be the janitor, which was amazing, and learning how to buff a floor. Skills that, you know, I never knew I had inside of me. <laughs> there they were. When is the next tour? Can you play in Ventura, please? Uh, well, it's just about, it's wrapping up. Uh, maybe next year, no doubt. Uh, we'll look at that. Um, come on, sing something now. It, I'm not waking up my son. You don't know what that entails. Um, <laughs> Jules. Much love. <laughs> The Phil from the Philippines. Good to see you, my friend. I don't know why we've never played the Philippines. I know that's crazy. And we've we've done all around. We punched and poked around there. Um, I know Matt from Vertical. They play down there quite a bit. Uh, we should maybe go down there and do like a double double. You know, and now Ed Edwin plays there a lot too, McCain. So it's always fun. Somebody just asked if we have a new album. It works. Well, we have new songs. Yeah. Morning Me Beloved is insane. Thank you, Emily. Um, that's we do love that one. Hi from Brazil. Hello. Uh, yeah, we have we have stuff out there. We, Wait, somebody somebody makes a, a really good point. Um, it says seemed like there were slightly different lyrics to Queen when you played it live prior to recording Sugar. Why the change? That's an interesting question. Um Well, if I'm I'm gonna I got a hot tub time machine in the back here, so I might <laughs> Hop in, uh, and I 
I can answer that question. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, you know how that is. Just things get solidified and worked through. And I mean, how many times, I'm not comparing this song to Queen, but how many times did Bruce record Born to Run? I mean, to get it right. I mean, lyric, like all, it took, whatever that documentary I watched, it's like it took him so much time just mm -hmm. to get it right. I mean, look at the end result. So that happens sometimes, you know, um, whoever asked that question. And like we were saying, you know, you, you, you recorded a song sometimes, like particularly on that, that fourth record that we did, where some of the songs like Precious Little Bird, I remember you finishing it in my backyard in LA. And we went and recorded it, like probably that day. And then, you know, we had played it once, twice, maybe three times. And we're like, oh, that's a good rhythm track done. It's just overdone, but both was done. And then we oh. played, now we played it, you know, dozens of times i'm sure on the road and it has a to me it has a whole different feel and it, you know we would do it completely differently now that happened the things that happened, develop that happened with sugar too um when when we had been we recorded the day if you listen to the recording of the demo of sugar you would hear a chorus that has ba basically the same music but a completely different lyric and a completely different melody yeah completely different and I think you you were like literally writing the lyrics as like right as we were walking into the studio to record it that day. Yeah. Because, you know, that's well, you know, I, I know every vocal I've ever sung, it's like that. I mean, I'm always in there with a pad. I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's you know, you, you could think about the best thing that it's gonna sound like when you're doing it because can but then when we're playing it, it's like it doesn't fit. Right. You know, there could be one little musical thing, Dan, you'd be like, you know, it's supposed to be the one and, and then you have to change the bass. And then Jeff's like, well, then the guitar part's not going to work. Then I'm up there like, but I'd get Ricky, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> So. Um, how is it recording with Bob Rock? Man, I would do well, that today. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. It wasn't also, it wasn't terrible recording it in, um hawaii either that was that was pretty uh yeah. pretty nice pretty great yeah man now he was uh it's it's it, it's hard to sing vocals watching whales breach that's for sure you know it's the <laughs> it's 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 a horrible job somebody's got to do it somebody's got to do it yeah um no i do not speak gaelic somebody asked that question uh, that no, i don't somebody just asked if we are planning on doing a box set hmm i don't know what that <laughs> sounds expensive to make yeah <laughs> Did you uh, say expensive yeah <laughs> a lot of boxes a lot of boxes involved <laughs> exactly um but yeah i'd love to do a box set a definitive vinyl do it box so set be, um Knockdown wall, so good. What's the last LP you purchased? Uh, that new Coldplay record, Color Tourist, or song, uh, Music of the Spears. Unbelievable record. Nice. Uh, we've, we're in a vintage vinyl right now. Mm -hmm. So it was like a <laughs> Gene Krupa. Oh, Lena Horn. That was the one from last that night. Good stuff. Yeah, it was good. Hell of a voice. Yeah. Uh, I see another question. What was the inspiration from the line, don't tell me that I've gone crazy. You're the one who tried to fucking change me in Knockdown Walls. Ouch. Come on, we're getting down to the part of the matter. <laughs> Dead Don Henley. <laughs> Private joke. <laughs> Um, I, I guess it's just somebody somebody was trying to make me be something that I wasn't and they were like you should be this way you're nuts if you're not I mean that's that's really what it was I mean I don't I don't need to get super specific but that was the intent yeah DS 
great, great live. I'm hoping she meant vibe, because I don't know what a live is. Dia, come on. You're... Or line. Maybe she meant line. <laughs> line. That's what it is, line. Nina Simone, yes. Thanks for all the years of great music. Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you. What's your favorite sound soundtrack song you all put together? Hmm. Uh, God, I loved our version of Everybody's Talking. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking that, but then yeah. the Flower Man, Flower Man. Flower Man. Great. Yeah. Uh, favorite bass player? Mm, that's tough. John Paul Jones, Paul McCartney. Nice. Um, I mean, Lincoln said Flower Man was cool. It is cool. Like it's very cool. <laughs> Yeti. Easy jewels. We're not picking on Don Henley. Good God. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> Favorite I, venue to play at? I mostly play Gibsons, but I, the Epiphones that I've played here and there are great, yes. Uh, favorite venue to play? Man, I'll tell you what, that theater, that Anthem Theater, that's pretty damn nice in D.C. Holy crap. Cool. And uh, you know, that, one, that one in Morristown we played the other night? Oh, in yeah. Jersey? Oh, Mayo Center. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was super cool. It was mayo -nazing. Ah, I see what I did. <laughs> Are you guys fans of Bon Jovi? I'll let you answer that. Somebody come back to Cleveland. Somebody just asked if it's okay to listen to Ryan Adams again. Look, man, you listen to people for their work, you know, what? nobody's going to Right. You're not having lunch with the guy. Um, what's the inspiration between take me as I am. Uh, it's really pretty self-explanatory. Um, yeah, I mean, always be who you are. Don't try to be something else. That's just a waste of everybody's time. We've all done it. Yes, I know, Dia. It was a, it was a joke. <laughs> uh, Lincoln, yes, I do still have the green Les Paul. Great guitar. Yeah. yeah. Dry Rock, yes, we were talking about... Uh, we are talking about... Soldiers don't really want to know. Oh, they want to know the meaning of that? Um, man, it's just about a girl that I knew uh, that was in a bad relationship, and she just refused to get out of it. And that's really that simple. And... I will not say her name. Hiring local cats for drums. No, I mean, we, we, we audition through people. I mean, not just, we're not showing up in a town. Um, like Chuck Berry? Yeah, like Chuck Berry, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Rich Scanella, you know, we, Dan knew him and he came, played and it worked great and he's been with us. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, What's some of the other, uh, uh on Father's Day? Oh, that was fun. Yeah, that was a good show. Um, Matt Winkler, how was Rich on tour? He was great. He is great. He's uh, just has a terrible attitude problem. Oh. <laughs> now, he's probably the nicest guy on the planet, so we've really mm -hmm. hit the jackpot there. <laughs> uh, somebody won one of our shoes. Take us to one of your shoes. Um, Syracuse, 2003, 2004. Well, hopefully it was good. Um, uh, I'm going to answer this. Jeff will tour again. <laughs> yes, I will. Yes, of course I will. Yeah, yes, you will. My morning jacket. That would be a fun tour, but I highly doubt we have two really different vibes. I'm not sure that would... I'm thinking that somebody would say to them, how about a tour with Tonic? And they might laugh. Yeah, it could be quite comical to them. Yeah. Although Jim Jason, you know, never know, man. Maybe he was like, you know, it might be a secret fan. You never know. Who knows? Right. Could be. Uh, who played drums on Sugar? Peter Maloney. Peter Pete Maloney. 
played yeah except for on the one uh, except for on you wanted more which was joey warnker yeah right. canada yes canada is a real place question mark. <laughs> uh, but it we does exist yeah well, I, we would love to go back to canada it's just a matter of doing it i mean i'd love to go up there with uh with ian's band that would be fun to go across do big, some big wreck uh, big wreck yeah yeah Ian. Oh, that'd, be, man, that'd be nice yeah yeah that'd be a great tour tonic and big wreck in canada that, that would, would be that would be a rock tour that would mm -hmm. be a that, real that would, rock tour go. <laughs> finally <laughs> yes uh, we're talking about that the new amphitheater in franklin it's pretty uh, and it sounds great uh, my cousin ryan is in more morning jackets oh cool well tell him we set, <laughs> set that and, up for us any, yeah. any merchandise in the works we're always working on stuff we sold a lot on this tour uh Wow, it's coming in through quick now. Yeah, a tour with Chevelle. That, that's another one. They mm. like, wait now, who? But they're rad. No, not that I've heard. Um, what am I sipping? I'm sipping a 2011 cab. Uh, I can't see the name of it. Sorry. Justin from Tishwala says tonic and Tishwala. Oh. Sure. I'm down with that, Justin. <laughs> Why? It's Emerson's facial hair and you wanted more. <laughs> Look good on him. Why did he remove it? Um, you know, you just need to change sometimes, bro. You need to change. Go three. Wow. I'm on a big onesie, but no more there. Uh huh. You were the second person who wanted a onesie. <laughs> it wasn't a huge demand for the onesie. <laughs> right up there with uh, the lemon, the lemon shirt. The lemon plain. The lemon plain. I mean, I feel like we should um, solicit designs from people who want good tonic merch. <laughs> like, you know what? Send us one. <laughs> Send us a good design because we have had some real. Good ideas. Uh, no, the matchlesses are at least not out with me. Jeff does sometimes, but uh, I, only if only if we can rent them. Like my matchless doesn't leave the studio. I'm assuming yours doesn't leave your house. No, 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 it doesn't. Uh, it's still a great amp. You know, nothing nothing against it, but it's it just has no business being out on the road getting the crap beat out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. Um, I ever run a Kemper? I, I do not. I never no. have. I'm not even sure what a Kemper is, so I have to say no. <laughs> it's a modeler. That's what it is. Oh, it's modeling. Okay, then yeah. the <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Oh. Um, Sarah, our ballerina friend, has asked a thoughtful question about how it di does it feel different to, to be on stage now playing than it used to back in the day. Um. And I, I would say definitely, like, I, I, I don't know, like, whether 22 years ago, I thought that we would, you know, that's a pretty um, ambitious thought, you know? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think physically it feels different in the way that, I don't know, I just think we're, we play better now. We are... You know, we're also not walking on stage blind running junk. So that that also can affect it yeah. a little bit. I mean, we're still having fun because, let's face it, <clears throat> we're idiots and we still play rock and roll. But, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, back in the day, I, I remember such a feeling of gratitude. Like, oh, my God, this is such a – what an amazing experience. And I yeah. feel that same thing now, but just for different reasons. Like, to still be doing it is kind of amazing. Yeah. What what I say is that when I walk on stage and I look to my left, look to my right, see, you know, see the, the guys, I have the same joy I did 22 years ago. I feel that same joy when we play those songs. It's, it's a different 
feeling being in front of people playing and it's a different feeling certainly having done it for so long but but that sort of the, the basic feeling of um of joy is still is still exactly the same that doesn't change for me i mean that's the whole you know part of enjoyment of it dan but, yeah only one not wearing glasses <laughs> you'll see he's the young Yes, <laughs> I can see this distance. <laughs> this is the perfect distance. Everything, everything else, readers, I need readers and I need... Um... Nope, 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 not happening. <laughs> oh my God, I can't, I literally can't, I can't yeah. see the screen. <laughs> it's just a big mess. It's a big blur. We should play pilgrimage next year. We know some people. We're going to put it... I think... I think uh yeah that would be lovely that would yeah. that would be and i think that there's a possibility so yeah this fire is popping i gotta roll along sorry give me a second <laughs> one someone just asked how old are you guys now we're all 32 now what did you say 32 i mean <laughs> give or take <laughs> also okay. old is the Mm -hmm. what's going on did i miss anything someone asked how old we were and i told them that we're 32 A thousand years old <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um how did you decide on being tonic for your band that's an interesting story yeah it's musical musical you go ahead and tell well, you know, we, go ahead and tell at the time we were called uh, Radio Flyer and um, we found out that we couldn't use that name for a number of reasons, not necessarily the, the wagon, but it was just a, there was a, a lot of different reasons why we couldn't use it. So we just didn't have a name. We were making that record or we started making, we weren't actually making the record. We were in pre-production for the first record and uh, someone in the room said, go to tonic, which is the you know musical term for going to the one of the chord progression in the key. And then me, we all sort of looked at one another and were like, by George, that's it. <laughs> uh, and that was, and it stuck. I say that's a fantastic decision. Yes. <laughs> or not. Someone said they were 38. They're 38 and so, they, yeah. when they were in high school. Hey, this is not adding up here. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Each take turns. What's your bandmate's best quality? <laughs> it's on the table, kid. <laughs> these guys these guys are fantastic ma musicians mm. oh, oh, oh. Done. well played <laughs> my favorite quality of these guys is they're aging very well <laughs> not bad for 30 I will say this the two guys and the other uh, boxes here are filled with something that there isn't enough of in the world. And that's empathy. And that's their best quality is the ability to feel what other people can feel. And I think that's what keeps, you know, that's part of what keeps me connected with them. That's really laying it on the table, guys. That's, that's nice, man. You're having some real moments. It's really freaking me out. <laughs> How did you guys meet? It says. Um, it's a good question. Well, this is way before Grind. I met Dan, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Jeff and I knew each other uh, in New York. Um, we were teenagers, man. Uh, long, long, many, many years ago in Central Park, and uh, going to auditions and stuff like that. We were both actors when we were kids, and. Uh, 
that's how we met. And then we met Dan seeing his band at Molly Malone's. I mean, isn't that how we really met? I, yeah. We're, I think I was, weren't we introduced to you by Dan Rothschild? I think initially, yeah. yeah. I mean, I came to see the band, I came to see Radio Flyer because of mm -hmm. Dan. Right. And then um, I ended up being on like the same bill at the main a couple of times. And then I, the, the thing that stands out the most though is just like being at Molly Malone's and you guys would come in after something, you know, recording or whatever, rehearsals or something. And we would drink a bunch of Guinness together, which was um, time well spent. Oh, hell yes. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, we could go on all night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that what we're supposed to do? No. Jeez, I don't know. Geez, uh, I don't know. Uh, Emerson, yes. You ate me. Man, I missed that place. That was a great room in Nashville. Remember? We just had some good time. 328, yeah, that was a great haul. That was on a list of, uh, there's this Instagram thing called Music Shitty. And uh, they were talking about what, if you could bring something back, what would it be? And it was like four different things of old Nashville. But 328 Music Hall was on there. And I thought that was pretty, yeah, pretty awesome. Um, all right. Well, guys, you know, happy anniversary. Cheers. Cheers, fellas. And to everybody. Cheers. Yeah. We know it's a Tuesday. And uh, thank you for spending some of your Tuesday evening with us. And, um, you know, we're, we're always working on good things. We've got more music uh, ready to go. And we'll get that together. And we've got, you know, looking at stuff for next summer, whatever that's going to be. Who knows? It's like a can without a label. Could be beans, could be peaches. Both are good. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Would you say I'll pick peaches? I'll, I'll pick peaches. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, shit. Really? Wouldn't anybody? <laughs> yeah. Somebody actually did ask if we would do a 20th anniversary show of um, Head on Straight. Without a doubt, that I'm I'm looking forward to twenty years for that record. Look, I, maybe this time we don't do it in L.A. I hey, think, where, or else, where should we do it, peoples? Yeah, where why don't we? we let's put it to a vote tonight, and just have them post on uh, in tonic in the. I mean, on, the, on our Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. let us know where you think the twentieth anniversary. I mean, because shit, it's coming up, right? When is it? Next uh, year. Okay. What? Yeah, yeah. It's came out in 2002. Yeah, that's right. So next year is 20 years. Right? So, yeah. Came out in 2002. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to my mind, am I? <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. You're right. Austin. No, that, Austin? That. I don't know. New Jersey? That also. Ooh, what about the Stone Pony or something? What about the Stone Pony? Yeah, that'd be, that could be fun. I know Danny Clinch would. I mean, Danny Clinch did. Didn't he shoot that record? He did. He shot, uh, no, that was Neil. No, ne oh, right. Neil, right, right. Neil Preston, yeah. Neil Preston did that. Yeah. Dan Dan did, he, he did the promo stuff and some of the sought stuff on, sh on the Sugar record. Right. That's, that's right. Yeah. We should have got him in here. Yeah. That is too bad. Uh, uh, Danny Clinch. He's got a book. Have you seen his book? Well, his, his place, the reason I bring him up is his place is in, in Asbury Park. It's right next to Stone Pony. Oh. Yeah. He's got a gallery down there, and they just did that, um, was it See Here Now? Whatever, that festival he just yeah. did. Pearl Jam was down there. It, it was off That's the team. Amazing. The hometown people called me were like, bro, this thing was like retarded. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> That's awesome. So... And it was I I reached out to to uh, Danny to congratulate him and he's uh, he's just such a good guy man so maybe yeah maybe twenty years that could be fun maybe to do it we can check out the Jersey thing or maybe like the Count Basie in Red Bank something oh, yeah. like that all right so we got some ideas I can't believe it's next year man 
Well, we got it. That means I'm glad that we realized that because that means we have to actually work on that. Yeah. There's some songs on that record I have not. We need to start thinking about it. Ever played, ever? Songs on that record that you only played ever when we recorded it. <laughs> I mean, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, there are songs on that record that we've never played one time after making it, right? Man. I don't think Ring Around Her Finger, we've never played mm -hmm. that. Have we ever played that song? Yeah, we've played it live, but we, we didn't play it, played it a couple times. Yeah. Huh. Well, my love is hurting. She's alone again tonight. That's, I love that record, man. Yeah, that's I'm, a good one. That, that, that record for me. You know what that record is for me? I'll show you what that record is for me. Shut up, Storms. <laughs> Cowboys and Killers. <laughs> Shut <God>. up. <laughs> Our manager and the whole day and our guy has entered the chat. <laughs> this is that record for me. Yeah, man, that's right. Yeah. Space Station. Anyway. Where did you, have you had that? Or did was that Bob's that you used? No, no. I, I used... I used Bob's, but that's, I found one and bought it. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, everything that I think, did we even use any of our own gear on that record? I don't think we used any of our own gear. I used my chats. Yeah, yeah we brought yeah. our guitars over. I, I think I might've used my, I think I might've used my Les Paul once until he handed me that 1959 Les Paul that was given to him by Richie Sambora or whoever gave him that guitar. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right, well, I, I think I'm going to start listening to that record. In I'm going to gonna, um, I'm gonna take a shower and maybe light a fire in the bedroom, put on some headphones, and get lost in some head-on straight. Um, I'm going to be busy. busy. No, I mean, not years. fire, but listen to the record. Well, I mean, you know, I'm always here, bro. You can always. Let <laughs> <laughs> me just ask if you ever played Let Me Know. I don't remember ever playing that i don't think so <laughs> oh man yes brooke okay. with that. um well thank you everybody cheers and happy 22 everybody who joined on tonight thank you so much we we need to do this more i don't know why we don't we just we get every i know everybody's got busy lives and all that rigmarole but uh uh yeah we need to get it together we need to get it together. I love it when Tom came out and everybody like talking about Stone Pony. I'm sure he was like, oh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, so to our fans, thank you. Thank you for the questions, guys. We love you. And, yeah. uh, and yeah. you know, it, everybody have a very safe and wonderful Thanksgiving if we don't speak to you before then, which we probably won't. And, uh, I think our next show is sometime in December. So we'll whoever's coming to that one we'll we'll see you there. See you later, Reen. We love you. All right, everybody. All right. All right. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Good night, guys. Have a good one. All right, pal. Bye.